This is the HP Pavilion Aero 13. What's so special about it, you may ask? Well, it's a thin and light laptop featuring AMD's Ryzen 5000U series CPU, a 16 by 10 display, uh, which is a big thing for me these days. And the best part is that it starts at $800. Now, we've taken a look at numerous thin and light devices here, the studio for less than $1,000. And one of the common things that we've noticed specifically with AMD based models is that A, they're extremely difficult to find, and B, companies usually tend to, to cheap on things like the display, build quality, I.O., uh, and the list just kind of, kind of goes on. But I'm happy to report that the Aero 13 is actually trying to break that barrier. And I'm super excited to share my thoughts about it because this thing, this is a hidden gem for budget laptop buyers. So let's dive in. But first, a quick word from today's video sponsor. Play your games the right way with the much improved Virtuoso RGB Wireless XT with Bluetooth support, fantastic swivel hinges, deeper ear cushions, tactile controls with USB-C charging, a beefy microphone to step up your comms game, and awesome wireless sound reproduction. Check it out below. All right, so as usual, let's get to pricing and specs. It starts at $800, which I mentioned earlier, and for that, you get a Ryzen 5 5600U CPU with six cores and 12 threads, 16 gigabytes of RAM, 256 gigabytes of PCI NVMe SSD, a 16 by 10, 1200 P IPS display, and AMD's integrated Radeon graphics. You'll also find a few models with eight gigabytes of onboard memory. The next tier, which is what I have over here, comes with a Ryzen 7 5800U CPU with two additional cores and four threads, and half a terabyte of storage for about $1,000. And at the time of making this video, I saw this particular model go for $750 and the Ryzen 5 model for $690. And they're actually available to buy, which is something that I've never been able to say with any AMD thin and light laptops lately. So. Yay! Additionally, keep in mind that both these processors are based off the Zen 3 architecture, so you are getting the latest offering in terms of performance and efficiency from AMD. The design is very sleek and simple, guys. It certainly borrows a few traits from the Envy series because they're trying to keep it consistent across the lineup. Uh, you can actually pick this model in four colors like rose gold, ceramic white, warm gold, and natural silver, which is what I have over here. And I really like it. Uh, build quality is okay. The chassis consists of recycled ocean-bound plastics, which is thoughtful of the environment, but it does come with a few trade-offs, like uh, there's a little bit of keyboard flex and the display also flexes up a little bit. It does a great job at resisting fingerprints and the hinge is really stiff, which results in less wobble. It also elevates the keyboard at an angle, which complements the typing experience, so that's nice. As for size, it's really compact, guys. In fact, it lines up with the XPS 13, the ZenBook 13, and most 13-inch laptops on the market. Uh, the Z height is only 0.67 inches or 17 millimeters, and given that this thing is made out of plastic, it only weighs around 2.2 pounds, which makes it one of the lightest thin light laptops that I've ever got my hands on here in the studio. So you won't even feel this thing in your bag. The power adapter is also very light and easy to carry around. Uh, the cable is long enough, which I'm sure will come in handy uh, when you're in a coffee shop or lecture halls. The one thing that I wish for is USB Type-C charging, since this one uses a barrel style connector, which gets a job done, uh, but having USB Type-C would have added another useful port for both power and data. Moving on to the interior space, and what we have over here is a standard keyboard layout that's maximized the edges to accommodate uh, the larger keys. Speaking of which, um, they're actually pretty good. I was actually surprised by the amount of throw distance since it felt similar to the Spectre series that I tried a while back. Oddly, on my sample, the left shift key has a small rattle, uh, but otherwise, you know, the feedback is great. Uh, and for typists, this will get the job done really well. Unfortunately, you don't get any backlighting with this laptop, but if you configure it with HP's website, uh, there's a $20 option to add that feature. Then again, given the silver finish of these keycaps, the light reflecting off the display will actually help you distinguish the keys at night. There is a fingerprint reader right below the arrow keys, and to be honest, it was a bit finicky with my testing, but I'm glad that at least it's there instead of relying on Windows Hello, which on other laptops, I just tend to have a really tough time getting used to because it just doesn't work with my face for some reason. The trackpad is functional. Um, it's a smooth surface trying to replicate glass, but Hey, I mean, it gets a job done. Uh, it's not the best or the worst that I've tried, uh, but I did notice some, or at least small hiccups every now and then with palm detection. Uh, the primary left and right buttons are tactile, and thankfully they don't get stuck like the Dell Inspon series. So 
that's definitely great. The port situation is actually interesting on the Aero 13. So on the left-hand side, you get a full-size HDMI 2.0 port, a USB Type-A 3.2 Gen 1 port, a Type-C 3.2 Gen 2 port, and an audio jack. Uh, switching over to the left-hand side, you have power in and another USB Type-A port. Keep in mind that both USB Type-A ports are 5 gigabits per second. And what I meant by interesting earlier was the fact that these ports are hinged, which makes me question durability when you plug things a million times. Uh, so I would just handle it with caution when you're plugging stuff in. This is the webcam test on the NV13. Now, the quality looks pretty good, but I will say that it does tend to overexpose my skin tones quite a bit. Uh, but the definition is certainly better than some of the more expensive thin lights that I've checked out in the past, notably the XPS 13. But I want to focus on the microphone quality because as you hear or as you're hearing right now, it's really good. There's barely any background noise. I mean, I have the HVAC system running in the background. I mean, it focuses on my vocals without adding too much compression. I don't know what sort of software HP is doing with the built-in microphones on these laptops, especially for this price point, but this thing is awesome. Let me know what you guys think about in the comments. The speakers are located at the bottom, and HP says they're custom-tuned by the experts at Bang & Olufsen, but we all know that that's just a marketing gimmick because there's no bass whatsoever. Uh, trebles do tend to get a bit distorted, especially at higher volumes. So I would keep your expectations low. Even the built-in DAC powering the headphone jack is really bad. I mean, there's very less power output, so no bass or anything like that. Honestly, when it comes to the audio setup, um, that's where this thing kind of falls apart. Switching gears to the display, and guys, this is something that surprised me the most. You see, usually with laptops ranging between $700 to $1,000, come with cheap panels that suffer from color reproduction and brightness. This, on the other hand, breaks that barrier because what you're looking at is a 16 by 10 aspect ratio screen that's 1200p and IPS, and the colors, simply put, are beautiful. It covers 100% sRGB, 80% Adobe RGB, and 83% DCI-P3. That's sadly better than my main monitor that I use for editing videos. And of course, some gaming laptops or even thin and light devices that cost way more than this. Also, on top of that, this panel gets really bright. I mean, I got a peak reading of around 500 nits, which doesn't make any sense because according to HP spec, they say 400 nits. I ran the test multiple times and it was consistent. So, I mean, that's definitely good news. In fact, I was able to tell that this was a really bright panel when I started using this thing for the first time here in the office. You see, experiencing a screen like this on a laptop that costs less than $1,000 is genuinely mind blowing because you're not sacrificing or making that compromise that I mentioned earlier. Um, you can actually use it for photo editing or even a little bit of video editing, given that th this thing has eight cores. I mean, seriously, HP, you guys deserve a standing O for this. As for upgradability, this is where I left scratching my head a little bit. You see, the screws to access the components are hidden underneath the silicon straps. So you'll have to peel them, which loses its integrity. So you'll have to find replacement adhesives to attach them back in place. I know it sucks, but once you get in, you only have access to the single M.2 slot housing the NVMe SSD. And the drive speeds are really fast. Our half a terabyte sample scored a little over three gigabytes per second in read performance. However, writes were half of that, which is still pretty fast. Uh, the memory is soldered onto the PCB, but luckily 16 gigabytes is the default option uh, on the Ryzen 5 model, so no issues there. All right, so now on to a bit of testing. And usually at this point, I go through all the power modes, but on the Aero 13, there's only one power mode, so it'll actually make things a lot more easier. First of all, HP has set the Aero 13's 1500U to run at a constant 15 watts. That's actually the lower end of AMD spectrum, but perfectly acceptable for this class of notebook. I mean, remember, this thing has access to 16 threads, so there's more than enough horsepower to go around, and some manufacturers have chosen to run it uh, as low as 10 watts. Now, with that kind of power, it runs along 2.35 gigahertz, which is par for the course too, and it doesn't move from that even during an intensive all-core workload. This is actually a bit on the high side, mostly because temperatures are being better managed than even I expected. I mean, check this out. The CPU never went above a maximum of just 70 degrees, and even after a 50-minute workload, it leveled out to around 66 degrees. Now, you might think noise was sacrificed, but that isn't the case here, since this one's actually one of the quietest slim and light laptops that I've got here in the studio. I mean, 
you can hear the arrow fans if it's chugging through an intensive rendering or something else, but it doesn't get noisy or annoying at all. Surface temperatures are really good too. Honestly, I'm just amazed at this thing. There weren't any uncomfortable hotspots on the keyboard area and your hands are saved from the exhaust heat uh, since all the air is blown towards the back of the screen. Even the underside stayed almost cool to the touch other than a small area near the vents. Now, before I get into any of these benchmarks, there's actually something that I need to mention. You see, the Aero 13 is one of the first laptops in the charts using Windows 11. And that's an issue because if our last CPU reviews have told us anything, it's that Windows 11 nails pretty much every system with lower performance and battery life compared to Windows 10. But since every new laptops come preloaded with Microsoft's crappy new OS, there's just no way to avoid it other than installing Windows 10. I also wanna mention that when we were testing this under Windows 11, uh, we disabled VBS and made sure all the updates were applied. So in this case, the patches for Ryzen CPUs have uh, been effect. So just wanted to get that clear. Anyways, starting with battery life and I was actually pleasantly surprised. Now, even with a combination of the smallest battery capacity here and Windows 11, of course, this thing actually lasted for more than or almost 14 hours in our light load test. Uh, it's also got that slightly larger 16 by 10 screen, which uses a bit more power than some of the other laptops here as well. The heavy load tests are pretty respectable too, given how small the battery is. And the fact it's powering an eight core 16 thread processor, I mean, I wish HP would have popped more battery capacity into this thing since it would probably be among the best that we've tested. In real world applications, the performance is exactly what you'd expect from a 5800U running at 15 watts under Windows 11. Uh, it absolutely demolishes everything Intel can throw at it, but in heavy multi-core applications, it can be beaten by a 15 watt 5700U system using Windows 10. That's because the security overhead of Windows 11 becomes more apparent in those situations. But move on to lightly thread scenarios and the Aero 13 can really shine in pretty much every app. Uh, and since most folks will be using a thin and light laptop uh, for you know things like basic office or productivity tasks, these results are probably even more important than the full load tests. Switching over to gaming, um, it's actually pretty much in line with what I've seen before from this platform, but it's still good to see these kinds of numbers from a budget-oriented laptop. Now for light gaming, this is perfectly fine, and while AMD's integrated graphics can't keep up with Intel's XE all the time, overall, their game compatibility is much, much better. So, final thoughts on the Pavilion Aero 13 from HP. Hopefully everything that I talked about this laptop has convinced you guys as to how much of a hidden gem this really is. I mean, the first thing that comes to my mind is the display. It's just beautiful with more screen real estate. It's bright, topping out the competition. Uh, the design is very modern and sleek. The keyboard and the trackpad, they get the job done. And uh, you actually get, um, you know, a handful number of ports. Oh, and I can't forget about the built-in microphone quality. I mean, that thing is just, it blew my mind as well. And if I were to look for downsides, I would have preferred USB Type-C charging, uh, a more refined uh, and robust USB Type-A port setup, and maybe a little bit more power pumped into the CPU. But honestly, guys, the pros certainly outweighs the cons. And you know, especially for a laptop that costs less than $1,000, it's just a no-brainer. And if you're in the market for a thin and light laptop within that price range, the Aero 13 should be, and I mean should be, on the top of your list because it's really that good. So on that note, thank you so much for watching. I hope you were able to take away everything that you needed to know about this, this hidden gem. I'm your with Harvard Canucks. Thanks again for watching, and uh, I will talk to you guys in the next one. Oh, and spend responsibly, my friends.